Hey there, and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I chronicle my installation of a number of Unify cameras to integrate into Unify Protect. It's not really meant to be a detailed how-to or setup and configuration, but rather show what my process was. I was previously using Reolink wireless solar-powered cameras that served their purpose as well. They only recorded on motion events and every now and then would not record the entire event. Since I recently had new gutters installed that required most of the real link cameras to be taken down, I figured what better time to upgrade in hardwire new cameras. So, for my install, I opted for a 12TB Western Digital Purple Pro surveillance hard drive, the 3-pack of Unified G5 Bullet 2K cameras, two Unified G5 Pro 4K cameras, the G4 Pro PoE doorbell and chime combo, and 250 feet of Bolt Cat 6 network cable to wire everything up to my Unified Dream Machine Pro. I'll be installing one of the G5 Pros right here, up above my garage overlooking the driveway. You can actually see one of my real link cameras right there. Or maybe install here at the corner in the soffit. I haven't decided yet. The other G5 Pro will go at this corner of the house, angled for a cross view of the front yard. And I'll be replacing this Nest doorbell, which I was fine paying $5 a month for, but when it was bumped up to $8, I knew I had to eventually leave this platform because the subscription will only continue to increase. I'll be installing two of the G5 bullet cameras in this soffit area here, one facing toward the street to cover the left side of my house, and the other angled to cross my backyard. And a third G5 bullet will be installed in or around the soffit area here to cover the right side of my house where my gate is. So now, Let's get these things unboxed and ready for installation. Again, I went with this 12TB WD Purple Pro surveillance hard drive. Next, here is the G4 Pro PoE doorbell kit. Inside the box, we have the PoE doorbell chime with 10100 fast ethernet jack on the back, the G4 Pro PoE doorbell itself, and under this weatherproof grommet, we find its gigabit ethernet jack. Here, we have an in-wall mounting enclosure for the chime which secures itself to the drywall with these tightening tabs and it's nice that it includes this installation bubble level. It also comes with this on-wall mount if for whatever reason you can't or don't want to do an in-wall installation of the chime. Again, it comes with an installation bubble level. We have a packet of mounting hardware for the chime mounting brackets that consists of plastic anchors and screws. And here is another packet of mounting hardware for the doorbell, which also consists of plastic anchors and screws, as well as a doorbell release tool. Installation QR code. A metal mounting bracket for flush mount installation. A polycarbonate on-wall mounting bracket, again, if you can't or don't want to install the doorbell flush. An installation template with bubble level. And a polycarbonate wedge mounting bracket to angle the doorbell if needed. Next, I'll unbox one of the G5 Pros. Attached to the inside of the box is some product and regulatory documentation. It looks like we have two mounting brackets provided. This one is for wall or ceiling mounting, and the second mount is for pole mounting. This is the G5 Pro camera itself. Very well built with an aluminum alloy body with 10100 PoE fast ethernet jack on the back, along with an accessory USB-C port. Here is the packet mounting hardware consisting of plastic anchors and screws. Here is the included tightening and loosening tool for the mount. And here is the articulating ball joint arm with waterproof grommet pre-installed. And finally, here is the G5 Bullet Camera 3-pack. Attached inside the box is product and regulatory documentation. Unlike the G5 Pro, this set of G5 Bullet cameras each come with a metal worm drive clamp for use with their pole mounts. Here is the pole mount, as well as the wall or ceiling mount. Here is the articulating ball joint arm, which, unlike the G5 Pro's aluminum alloy, is instead UV stabilized polycarbonate. Here is the G5 bullet camera itself, with PoE 10100 fast ethernet jack on the back. And here is its packet of mounting hardware. This will all be installed using this bulk of CAT6 cabling. So, let's get to it! But first, let me go over the tools I'll be using to complete this installation, which include fish tape and or fish rod, hammer drill with 11 sixteenths and a quarter inch masonry drill bit. I couldn't find an 11 sixteenths, so I'll be using a 5 eighths bit, which should be fine since I'll be passing unterminated cable. I think the slightly bigger hole is to allow some clearance for cable that has already been terminated. 
a regular drill with half inch to three quarter inch bit, a quarter inch bit, and one eighth inch bit. The larger diameter bits for both types of drills are for cable pass through. The quarter inch bits are to be able to set the plastic anchors if needed. And the eighth inch bit is for pilot holes in case I decide not to use the anchors at all. Next, I'll be using various screwdrivers, a battery powered one for convenience, and a manual Phillips to get a feel for the final tightening, and a double zero Phillips for a security screw. If you have mesh like soffits like I do, this hook and small pry tool are nice to have, but not required. I'll need to be able to mark my mounting holes, so I'm using a combination of punch tool and pencil, which mine happens to be a white colored pencil to stand out on the darker materials. I'm also going to need a network cable crimping tool, wire cutters, one of those cheap network cable punch down tools. I know I can use my crimping tool, but prefer to remove the outer jacket of the network cable with this tool by spinning it around. A electrical tape to attach and pull the cables with the fish line or fish rod. However, my pulls will be pretty smooth, so I will opt for the bullfrog tape because I don't like the difficulty and sticky residue left by my particular electrical tape. An oscillating tool or drywall saw in case I need to cut open any drywall. A flashlight or portable utility light. RJ45 connectors to terminate my cable pulls. Uh, another nice to have is a network cable tester to reduce troubleshooting time if a cable isn't working as expected after termination. A small bucket or container of some kind is also nice to catch all the wire clippings that fall from terminating a cable, as well as be able to keep a few of the most frequently used tools within reach. Oh, I almost forgot. Flush coders will also come in handy, as well as this chisel bit for the hammer drill, this three and a quarter inch hole saw, mallet of some kind, and a stud finder. This one happens to be the magnetic type. Some of these are optional and nice to have. So with that said, use your own discretion for the tools you'll need for your specific situation. So first thing I'll do is flip the circuit breaker to kill power to my current Google Nest doorbell. Next, I'll use the SIM removal tool I had laying around to pop the Nest doorbell free from its mount. Then I'll go ahead and disconnect the wires and remove the mount. I couldn't remember and was hoping there was a workable hole behind the doorbell where I could just use the existing wire as my fish tape, but as you can see there isn't much of a hole here. I will still use the existing wire as fish tape, but I will first use this included template to mark my mount holes, and trace out the pass through hole that I will need to punch through and create. Using the bubble level on the template, I'm making sure my markings will be level. One of the existing holes already matches the top hole of the template. I'll just need to enlarge it a bit with the quarter inch masonry drill bit. For the center pass through hole, I will drill a series of holes all around the perimeter of what I traced, then knock out or chisel away the perforated area. It's getting there, but I think I'll have more luck and be a bit easier if I can access this wire from the other side. So I'll cut away this section of drywall I've marked with my oscillating tool and just patch up the drywall later. I did it off camera, but I went ahead and squared up the hole I made using the hammer drill and chisel bit, as well as punched a minimal size hole all the way through just big enough to accommodate my ethernet cable. As you can see, the mounting plate fits snugly. However, I'll be using the wedge mount to angle my doorbell for the optimal view. So now I'll pass my Cat6 cable through to the other side. Pull it through, then hook these two together so I can pull them up into the attic. For a secure hold, I will hook and bend the wires from the existing wire and the Cat6 cable back onto themselves and tape over the connection. This will keep them from coming apart and smoothen the transition as not to snag on anything in the wall. I will then use the existing doorbell wire to fish the ethernet up to the attic. But first, let me pull myself several feet of slack. I didn't fill myself up in the attic because it's way too hot and uncomfortable up there here in the south in the summer. But I pulled enough cable and routed the other end to my mini rack in my closet. I also went ahead and disconnected the old doorbell wire from its transformer up there, tightened the screw terminals, and placed electrical tape over them as not to have the live wire or something accidentally short across the terminals. I've already drilled my quarter inch holes and inserted the plastic anchor, so I'll go ahead and terminate and mount the doorbell. I'll first remove the weatherproof grommet and be sure to pass my cable through it. Next, I'll remove the sticky peels from the wedge and attach the metal mounting plate to it. I'll be using the medium length screws that came in the hardware pack for the doorbell. 
I'll go ahead and slide the cable through the pass-through in the mounting bracket and proceed to screw the mount to the brick. Now, I'll strip away a section of the ethernet cable so I can separate and straighten the twisted pairs, after I cut away this ripcord and separator. Right now, I'm just double checking the wiring diagram to follow the T568B standard. However, as long as the wiring is color-coded the same on both sides, the cable will work. To better manage these wires, they'll need to be straightened using my thumb and this screwdriver. Like so. Now that I've arranged them in the correct order, I'll trim the wires to be uniform to easily slide into the RJ45 connector. I'll double check the ordering one more time, and it looks good to me so I'll shove the jacket into the connector as far as I can. Put the connector into the tool, and clamp down. The extra wire hanging out the end is trimmed off and the connector is now crimped and cable terminated. All that is left on this end is to plug the cable into the doorbell, snug up the grommet, snap the doorbell onto its mount, and install the security screw with the double zero Phillips head screwdriver. Now, I'll go inside and start on the PoE chime. I'll be installing the in-wall mount right next to the old chime system of the previous doorbell. Right here I've used my magnetic stud finder because I want to make sure that I'm not going to cut a circular hole on top of a stud. Now that I'm sure I won't be hitting a stud, I'll take my drill here with the three and a quarter inch hole saw and cut my hole. To find exactly where I'll be dropping my Cat6 cable from, I'll now make a small hole in the ceiling and stick a paperclip through to act as a reference point. Now that I have my reference point, it's easy for me to find and drop the Cat6 cable to the chime location and the other end through where all the other ethernet cables are terminated. All that is left is to pull the cable through the chime hole and mount. Set the mount, and terminate the cable with the connector. With the cable terminated, I just need to plug it into the chime and push the chime into the mount and twist to lock it into place, and place the magnetic trim over it for a clean look. Now I'm at my networking rack. I'll need to undo my cable pass-through faceplate to grab the other end of the doorbell and chime cable drops. Okay, I've got my chime and doorbell cables. I'm just going to go ahead and peel back the outer sheathing and start to untwist these pairs over my handy dandy bucket to catch all the trimmings. And after confirming the wiring color code, I'll just go ahead and trim these wires to a neat manageable length to pass through my connector. Just confirming the color code one last time and crimping it. And I'll repeat for all the other cables that will be dropped for the various cameras. Before I plug the cables in, I'll go ahead and install my 12 terabyte hard drive. Then, plug my cables in. I'm going to run really quick to go see what this looks like in the Unify console. Great, I see my hard drive is recognized, and since it's a new blank drive, I see that the console went ahead and initialized and formatted for me, making it ready to go. Let me just click on the Unify devices here, and see if the doorbell and chime come up. There they go. Let me switch to protect. And I'll go ahead and click to adopt both of them, and give them some time to initialize and update. Nice, they're now both showing online. Now I'll get to installing all the rest of the cameras, starting off with the one over the garage and driveway. First, I'll use the G5 Pro mount to mark my holes. Then use my hammer drill and 5 8 inch drill bit to punch a hole through for my network cable to pass, followed by the quarter inch drill bit so that I can set my plastic anchors. From the attic, I'll go ahead and push my cable through. And with my handy bucket set up again, I'll proceed to terminate this end with an RJ45 connector. Oops, before I get too far, let me go ahead and slide the cable through the mount's weatherproof grommet.
All that was left for this camera was to plug in the cable, screw it onto its mount, remove the protective peel, terminate and plug the other end into the PoE port on my Unified Dream Machine Pro. And finally, adopt it on the console. On to the next camera, which will be another G5 Pro which will have its view cross my front yard. As previously, I'll first mark my mount holes. Drill the holes out. Now the soffit grate doesn't go all the way to where the mount hole is to easily pass my cable, so I'll use my flexible nylon fish tape to fish the cable through. Since my cable is through, I just need to repeat the steps again of passing the cable through the mount and grommet, terminating the cable, plugging the cable into the camera, screwing the camera onto its mount, terminating the other end, and plugging it into a PoE port on my UDM Pro. Here it is, ready to adopt in the console, so I'll go ahead and do just that. I just need to repeat this process three more times with the G5 Bullet 3 pack at the other corners of my house. This one here will cover the gate side of my house. And here it is ready to adopt in the console, so I'll go ahead and click to adopt. And now I'm almost done with all the cameras needing installation. For the last two cameras, I'll have one mounted here facing the street to cover this side of my house, and the last one there angled to cover the backyard. Because the last two cables for these last two cameras were a simultaneous drop due to their proximity to each other, I plugged them both in at the same time, and you can see that they are both ready to be adopted into Protect. So I'll go ahead and do that, and conclude this video. Hopefully this video showing my rough process gives an idea of what it takes to do an installation like this, and maybe highlight some of the pitfalls you can avoid. Or you possibly see a process you can improve upon, and for those, please share them in the comments section as it may help myself or others in the future. Thanks for watching.